Hi guys! Today we'll be discussing adaptive design pattern and it is fairly easy to understand so 10-15 minutes of your time and you might be able to crack another interview or be more awesome at your work. So without wasting any time, let's get started. And to understand it in a very easy way, let's take a very relatable example. If you follow me on Insta, you might be knowing that I recently went to Europe. So the people who go to Europe face a very common problem. So the chargers that we have, the laptop and the mobile chargers don't work over there because the plug points are incompatible. The voltage and frequency range is actually the same, but the problem is that the plug layout is different. So the charger that I have is incompatible with the plug point that I have. So what do we do? We use an adapter, we put it in between and it starts working. So what does adaptive design pattern do? If we have two incompatible objects, here what are the two incompatible objects? The plug point and the charger, we put an adapter in between and it starts working. So adaptive design pattern is used when there are two incompatible objects, but we could be actually satisfying our client. The only difference is the incompatibility. So an adapter is put in between to make sure that the difference in the layout is not a problem and when we plug this in using the adapter, the electricity is transferred. This pattern is actually very easy to understand because adapter is such a commonly used term. You must have heard of USB to Ethernet adapters also. But how is it used in terms of coding? So let's take an example that we're actually going to code also and understand how design pattern works. What is adapter design pattern? Before we move ahead, I would like to say that there is no promotion in the video. The video is not sponsored by any company. But if you appreciate my work, I would highly request you. And it would mean so much to me if you could hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. And I have two more channels. One channel is for the beginners of DSA and another channel I recently started where I'm sharing my personal life details because there's so much going on. So if you would like to appreciate me, it would really mean a lot. Please do subscribe and share. And it is you who is going to motivate me to create more and better content every single day. So now let's get back to our example that we are going to be coding. To take a coding related example, let's assume that we have some data with us and we have this data in terms of XML. So we have some XML data and we want to analyze this data. So what do we decide? We decide to use some data analytics tool. So we have a tool and we are going to pass our data to this tool and we are going to analyze our XML data that we have. But now the problem is the tool that we are going to use expects the data in JSON. XML is not compatible with it. Now the problem is here, see our tool can actually analyze the data. It is very good at analyzing the data. But the only problem is that it expects the data in JSON and we have it in XML. So what am I going to do is I'm going to put an adapter in between. I'm going to be using adaptive design pattern to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the XML data to JSON and then feed it to the tool. But when we do so, the client is not going to come to know that, okay, there is an adapter in between. Just how it was going to send the data to the uh, target, basically it is going to say that, okay, analyze this data. We want it to do very smoothly without the client really realizing that, okay, there is an adapter in between. So this is the problem that we are going to be solving and we are going to see that how we can write the code in a beautiful way and make sure that our client is not disturbed and we use an adapter to make sure that the XML data is converted to JSON and then sent to the analytics tool for analysis. So let's start writing the code now. So let's start with our XML data. So suppose there is a class, I'm going to keep it very simple just to understand. So I have a class right now and it has some data, okay? So in the private, I have some XML data and in the public section, I'm going to write the constructor and to again, keep it very simple, I'm going to pass the data in the constructor itself right now and assign it, okay? So P XML data. And what am I going to do? I'm going to assign the XML data to the past XML data. So I have written a constructor and now I'm just going to write a uh, getter. So what am I going to do? I'm going to return the data when I call this function. So get XML data and very simple. I'm just going to return XML data. Okay. So this is the data class that I have. Other than this XML data, what do we have? We have a data analytics tool, right? So let's write a class for that also. I am writing data analytics tool. What do we have in this? We have some JSON data that we are going to be analyzing. So what are we going to do? We are going to write JSON data that we are going to be analyzing. Okay, again, in the public part, 
we are going to write the constructor so data analytics tool and we are going to pass the data in this so i am passing the parameter json data and i am just going to assign the json data to the parameter that is being passed okay but what does this tool do actually what it is going to do is it is going to analyze the data so i am going to write another function which is going to be very simple just analyze the data okay and right now to keep it very very easy i am just going to output a statement that analyzing this particular data and i am going to print it out that okay this is the data that i am analyzing so i am going to print the json data okay so this is what we have we have the xml data class and we have data analytics tool now let's see how our client is going to use and how our mean is going to look like okay so let's do that we also have a class client now what does this client do all it has to do is process data right so in the public section i am going to write a function that process data and what uh, does the client need to process this data it needs the tool and needs the data that has to be processed right so in this processing data what am i going to do is uh, i am going to pass the data analytics tool because that we have right so i am passing the tool to it and what i am going to be doing is from this tool i am going to call the function analyze data that we had written right so we wrote this analyze data the data suppose let's assume that this class already has now the other client has to do what it has to process the data so it has the tool it is just going to tell the tool that you analyze the data i am not going to do anything else now let's see how our mean is going to look like let's create objects of all these classes uh, let's just start writing our mean now so what are we going to do in our mean we have three classes we are going to be creating objects of all the three classes okay so what was the first class that we created it was the xml data class right so i am going to create an object of xml data so i am calling it as okay new xml data now what was the constructor expecting our constructor is expecting string okay so we have to send some sample xml data so that's what i'm going to do over here i'm just going to write sample xml data and pass it okay now what was the next class that we created the next class that we created was the data analytics tool right so i'm going to create an object of data analytics tool and i'm going to call it like okay new data analytics tool okay now what does this constructor expect this constructor expects json data now that is the problem that i don't have any json data okay so this is a problem right now we are going to come back to this and see that how we can solve this and how we can pass some json data to it okay what was the third class that we created we have a client okay and we are going to create the client co object and we are going to call it okay new client and what does this client do this client just processes data so we are going to call the process data function and what does this function expects it expects the tool right so we are going to pass the data analytics tool to it which we are going to create now okay so we have to solve the problem of creating this tool because we don't have any json data to pass over here so what our client will do is it is just going to process the data it has the tool it is going to analyze the data our only problem right now is that we don't have any json data we have xml data so now what we are going to do is we are going to create an adapter class now the key point over here is when we create the adapter class our client shouldn't have to bother now how will we do that that is the main point to understand our client should not have to change this process data because now we are changing our tool suppose there was some old tool that was okay working with uh, xml data so this analyze data worked okay now we are passing a new tool now it is expecting json data and our client shouldn't have to bother that okay our tool has been changed now it expects json data so now to in order to make it very smooth and for the client to not realize what i should have to do is when i create this data analytics tool the pointer should remain same but now the object that i create should be of the adapter type see so now what will do what will happen is when i pass this tool i am still passing the object type of data analytics tool only but the actual object is the pointer is data analytics tool but the object is adapter so we are very beautifully making sure the client doesn't have to bother the pointer type remains same we are just changing our object type so instead of our object type being a data analytics tool now our object type is going to be adapter how are we going to do that we are going to derive adapter from data analytics tool 
okay so don't worry if it is not clear yet we are going to make the diagram also and understand that okay how does the adaptive design pattern ka diagram look we are going to understand that what was the target what was the adaptive why did we use the adapt and how the class diagram looks you need to be patient over here but in simple terms you need to understand that why are we deriving adaptive from a uh, data analytics tool it is because i don't want my client to bother and i want to pass the same pointer type okay now another thing this adapter should have this xml data somehow right because adapter needs the xml data to convert it into json data and then analyze it right so what are we going to do we are going to pass the xml data to it so we are going to create a constructor such that we pass the xml data to it so finally let's start writing our class adapter i'm calling it adapter itself to keep it very easy we are going to derive it from data analytics tool again i have explained it to you why we have to do that it is very important to understand these little points so that we don't have to mug up that okay how the class diagram looks we should be able to understand it okay and in the constructor what was happening i was passing xml data to it right so i am going to write a constructor why i am passing xml data ka object right so i am going to pass xml data to it and now what i'm going to do i'm going to create a private xml data object and in this particular constructor i am going to assign the xml data to the xml data that has been passed now let's come to the most important part what is the most important part what does the adapter have to do it has to use the xml data and do the analysis that this basic class was doing okay so now what we have to do is we have to call this analyze data from this adapter itself so what do we do we make this particular function as virtual so now we are going to derive it so when we are going to call from the adapter object instead of this function being called this function will be called okay so let's write that so i am going to write it also as override now what does this function actually do Uh, I am going to write output statements only to just make it simple right now. But we have to understand that what is the function of the adapter. Adapter is going to convert the XML data that we have into JSON data and then analyze. So basically, whatever the function was doing in the data analytics tool, it is going to do in the adapter now. So what I am going to output, I am going to output that I am converting the XML data that I have. okay so now what xml data do we have i'm just going to output it also so in this xml data object we had created a getter right so i am going to call that getter and just output it so i am going to call this get xml data and i am going to write converting this xml data to json data okay and what am i going to do now after this i am going to analyze the data basically whatever this function was doing i have to do in this function itself so now i am going to be analyzing the converted json data there is an error over here that says that no default constructor for data analytics tool so let's create that data analytics tool this is just a default constructor so we are finally done writing our adapter also what did we do we derived it from data analytics tool so this was our target and this was the adaptive i'm going to explain it using the class diagram so don't worry but using the term so that you get used to it so we derived it from the target there was an object of adaptive into it we did the conversion and we have overridden the function that was there in the data analytics tool that that was there in the target so now how does our main change so here our adapter object is created to which we pass the xml data actually what would have happened is that this data analytics tool would have been expecting data analytics tool ka object only but now we have been smart we uh, derived adapter from data analytics tool and we created the object type of adapter now let's run it and see whether it works or not so i've already created the ex and i'm going to run it to see what happens so here what is the output we had some xml data we are converting xml data which is the sample xml data that we had to json data and then we have analyzed the converted json data so what happened over here the uh, analyzed data of the adapter class was called so that is why these lines were output and not this analyzed data of the data analytics tool class 
Why did we why did that happen? Because we made it virtual, and then we have overridden the function to make sure that okay, the analyzed data of the adapter uh, uh, is used, and we have made sure that the client does not come to know about this, so the conversion is very smooth, and our client didn't have to make any changes. It was still given the tool, and all it had to do was call the analyzed data function from the tool. Let's finally look at our class diagram and understand how the class diagram looks. I hope you have understood how this works. If you have any doubts, let me know in the comments. And there are a few more pointers that I am hoping you will understand from the diagram properly. So this is the class diagram of the adaptive design pattern. So we had a client, we have a target and we have an adaptive. Now these are the technical terms, but in our example, what was happening? Data analytics tool was the target. So our client had to call a function. So our request was what? That analyze data from the data analytics tool and we had some XML data which was the adaptive but these two classes were incompatible how were they incompatible this target basically the data analytics tool was expecting JSON data but what did we have we had XML data so what did we do we put an adapter in between to make these two classes compatible now how did we make it compatible if you remember we had inherited the adapter class from the data analytics tool class right so this is what we are doing over here. We are inheriting the adapter from the target. And if you remember, we had passed XML data in the constructor of our adapter, right? So uh, the XML data was basically a member. So there was a composition relationship of the adaptive with the adapter. Let me say that again. So we have a client, we have the data analytics tool, which is our target, and we have some XML data. These two are incompatible. So what do we do? We put an adapter in between to make it very seamless we have inherited the adapter from target which is the data analytics tool we are going to overwrite this request basically we are going to overwrite the analyze data function and we are going to have the adaptee as a member in the adapter so basically xml data was passed to the constructor right and that is how the adapter converted the xml data to the json data and it did the analysis i hope this is very very clear now there is one small point when it comes to adaptive design pattern Another way of writing it is that instead of this composition, instead of passing the adaptive object in the constructor, what we could have done is we could have inherited the uh, adapter from adaptive also. So basically multiple inheritance. So basically adapter would have been inheriting from target as well as from adaptive. Now not all languages support this, uh, but C++ does. But since not all languages support this, we are not going to be writing the code, but it is very easy to understand. So what we would have been doing is that adapter would be inheriting from target as well as from adaptive. So it would still have the adaptive, right? In the end, in our, in our adapter, what was we, what were we doing? We just needed the XML data to convert it, right? Now we would still have it if we inherit instead of using the composition relationship. So the code that we wrote where we were actually using the composition relationship, it is actually called object adapter pattern. Now some people might ask you this, so I'm making it very clear. In object adapter pattern, we are having the adaptive object inside adapter. There is a composition relationship. But if you would have used multiple inheritance, then it would have been called class adapter pattern. In class adapter pattern, what happens? We use multiple inheritance and we inherit adapter from both target and adaptive. Try writing the code yourself. It is very easy. We don't have to make many changes. We just have to inherit the adapter from adaptive also. We inherit it from both target and adaptive. The rest of the things remain same because we still have the XML data. We still have to override the analyze uh, data part. I hope you have understood the entire thing, but if you have any doubts, let me know. Next, we are going to be discussing the facade design pattern and the strategy design pattern. I hope this was helpful. A lot of you message me and tell me that how the design pattern videos have helped you in the interviews, have helped you crack interviews. And these messages mean so much to me. They are all the motivation for me. I hope you are liking the series. I'm going to finish it very soon. I promise within a week or two, we are going to cover all the important design patterns. Please do subscribe. It will mean so much to me. Thank you.